foreign aid, uh, Ukraine, Israel, how do you feel about that as, and its importance? Well, I totally support supporting Israel and standing up for Israel. I believe that this is God's plan to stand up for Israel. That's his chosen people. In terms of Ukraine, I think that's a war that needs to be fought by Ukraine. Israelis, God's people. Ukrainians, not so much. Money to Ukraine and money to Israel. How do you feel about that? Uh, Israel is a great ally. Ukraine, I, I really think, is money laundering mess on both sides. So you think Zelensky's laundering the money, or well, how did he just get the two big yachts that he got? And you hear about all the politicians, Ukrainian, going on vacations to Italy, driving Ferraris and Porsches. We are paying for this. We're paying for those people's pensions and their businesses. Why are working Americans having to pay for other countries when we're not taking care of our own? <laughs> Look, if I thought Zelensky had two yachts, I would not send money over there either. One yacht, okay, but two, that's a little bit much. By the way, if you believe that, that just means that you're watching the Kremlin news station. Israel doesn't need a ceasefire. It needs its allies to cease with the politics and deliver support now. And that's what we're doing. House Republicans plan to do that. We're going to do it in short order, and it provides Israel the aid it needs to defend itself, free its hostages, and eradicate Hamas, which is a mission that must be accomplished. All of this, all of this, while we also work to ensure responsible spending and reduce the size of the federal government to pay for that commitment to our friend and ally. We cannot waste any time getting Israel the aid it needs. We're going to work on that. Austerity measures for Americans so that we can send more money to Israel. Do you think that's what we elected him for? Boo! Boo! You do a disservice to Pennsylvania. Well, that's John Fetterman mocking his constituents by waving a foreign flag in their face. All they're calling for is a ceasefire. But John surely thinks they must be misinformed. Why do you think so many younger people, especially in your party, see it differently? I, I really, I really don't, I really don't know. Uh, I, I do know that a lot of people are getting their perspective from TikTok. And I think if you're kind of getting your perspective on the world on TikTok, it's going to tend to be kind of warped or not reflective of the, the history and, and actually the way things absolutely are. And what is very clear is, is that Hamas started this and they actually broke the, the ceasefire. Oh, that must be it, John. It's because they're getting their information from TikTok that they're misinformed. I'm sure you'd prefer they get their information from Facebook memes shared by aunts and uncles. And speaking of not knowing the history, he just said Hamas started this. Yes, it all started on October 7 by Hamas. If you really care about the lives lost here, then you should honor the lives lost and call for a ceasefire in Palestine. Ceasefire! Ceasefire! That's all right. 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 We have a lot to unpack here. Joe Biden and John Fetterman both seem very confused as to why their supporters don't want to co-sign genocide. Neither of them have ever questioned the integrity of Israel, probably in their entire lives and public careers. Joe Biden finds himself in the very unenviable position of being way too hard on Israel for the right and way too lenient on Israel for the left. The left is calling him genocide and Biden and the right, well, they weren't going to support him in the first place. I personally think Democrats need to start mobilizing behind a new candidate. I don't think Joe Biden has a prayer in the upcoming election. Donald Trump seems to be leading in all polls. doesn't really matter how many indictments he's had or how many scandals he's had or how many times he incited insurrection. That being said, the Democrats absolutely need to get their ish together, as the young folks would say. Joe Biden, though, is very much, and John Fetterman, indicative of the old guard Democrats 
who have no idea how young people think or how young people operate and where young people get their information, mocking young people's understanding of Israel's history and then saying Hamas started this, excuse me. Hamas wasn't elected until, I believe, 2006, (laughs) some 18 years ago. Okay, And the average age, by the way, of Palestinians in Gaza is about 18, which means that holding them accountable for the actions of Hamas is like holding my infant baby accountable for the actions of Barack Obama. Okay, It's absolutely absurd. Here's the thing. Here in the United States, it doesn't matter whether you support Israel or not. Here is a fact. Israel has free health care, in part because we send them lots of money roughly $3.8 billion per year. And I don't think any Americans are reaping the benefits thereof. APAC is obviously a very powerful lobby. And I, as a Jewish American, grew up believing that Israel could do no wrong, probably much like John Fetterman and Joe Biden. But here's the thing. I have adapted with new information. Once I was a sophomore in college and I started taking courses in international politics, I realized, well, Israel can do wrong and often does do wrong. And standing idly by while they commit genocide against a people that are far outmatched, well, that's just reprehensible. And as a United States citizen, I can't in good conscience keep sending my tax dollars over to a country that claims moral superiority while murdering women and children. Is Israel an ally? Yes, but that doesn't mean we stand idly by while they do whatever they want. The Democrats also need to figure out what we're going to do with this upcoming election, because right now Donald Trump is eating their lunch. I hope there is a ceasefire soon and a long-term solution. I'm David Balaban for Rebel HQ.